Well, after disappointing second installments of his trilogy, it looks like in this third installment that life has finally found a way. Yo dudes, the Empire's pretty chill. Maybe you could like join it or something. One, Luke and Merce Prime here, so it's time for another movie review today, and this time it's going to be for uh, the, the third and final part of the Jurassic World trilogy and the sixth installment overall of the Jurassic Park franchise. And this is the most recent film in the series, guys, which of course is none other than 2022's Jurassic World Dominion. So, how was this movie made, guys? So this was, this was directed by Colin Trevorrow, who previously, of course, directed Jurassic World in this franchise and this film is, is of course um, concluding the the storyline that started with, with the original movie and the film brings back many actors from the the original or movie as well which was definitely pretty amazing and and it, it brings them together with the characters from the current trilogy so so how was the movie made planning for the film began in, in 2014 before the, the release of Jurassic World and filming took place from February to November 2020 in Vancouver, um, England's Pinewood Studios, Malta and Switzerland. And after a, a few delays, of course, unfortunately due to the coronavirus pandemic. One such setback involved in the filming was, was that Jake Johnson, who was meant to be reprising his role as Larry Crowers, had to unfortunately drop out of it. So yeah, big shame that he couldn't come back because he was funny in the first Jurassic World movie. Despite all these delays however, in production, um, the film of course completed filming and the film premiered in Mexico City on May 23rd, 2022 and was released in the United States on June 10th, 2022 by Universal Pictures. Like its predecessors, the film was a financial hit and grossed $1 billion worldwide, making it the third highest grossing film of 2022 after unfortunately a film which i refuse to watch of course which is avatar the way of water and thankfully an amazing film that definitely deserved all the gross and they got which was top gun maverick and and it was also a third film released in the aftermath of, of the pandemic to gross one billion dollars and the fourth film in the franchise to gross one billion dollars however unfortunately the film received generally negative reviews from critics who thought the franchise had run its course however when it comes to my reaction to this film, guys, um, due to being busy with, with work, I couldn't see the film in theatres at the time it came out because I, I was really busy back then. But when it came to streaming, I finally got around to watching it. And I got to say that I actually really liked the movie. I didn't think it was terrible by any means at all. And it was definitely an improvement over, over Fallen Kingdom, in my opinion. And also definitely as well, far better compared to the garbage film which is Jurassic Park 3 because I, I despise Jurassic Park 3. This film was much better. So yeah, this film in my opinion does not deserve the hate. And also as well, um, last night when it comes to rewatches, I actually watched the extended version because this, this Blu-ray steelbook I have of a movie actually has the extended version of a movie in. And in my opinion, the extended version is the true version of a movie to me. Absolutely. And I'll get to why we're on talking about the extended version, but... What is the movie about anyway? So, so the film takes place four years after the events of Fallen Kingdom, with dinosaurs now living ar alongside humans around the world, which is a really dumb way to end that film, wasn't it? The film follows Owen Grady and Claire Deering, who are once again played by Chris Pratt and Bryce Dallas Howard, as they embark on a rescue mission, while Alan Grant and Ellie Sattler team up with Ian Malcolm to expose a conspiracy by the Genomics Com Corporation Biosyn, a one-time rival of InGen. So, um, when it comes to this film, um, I, I definitely think it was really good and what's great about it. So, so I just said, of course, that the film brought back, of course, um, beloved characters from, from the older movies. So, for the first time together since the first movie, the film brings back Dr. Grant, Dr. Sattler and Dr. Malcolm. And, in my opinion, guys, their scenes were the best part of the movie. Like, one of the reasons why I don't hate this film is because I really loved seeing them together on the screen. Like, seeing the three actors together on screen, together, like, it brought up so many memories of the first movie, and I definitely loved their scenes very much. It was incredible to see them together like that. And, and they are once again very likeable characters, and I'm so glad that this film definitely used 
um, Ian Malcolm and Ellie are slightly better than their last appearances because Ian Malcolm, as I ran throughout in Fallen Kingdom's review, who only had a couple of scenes in that film, which which I hated because he's my favourite Jurassic Park character of all time. But thankfully, in this film, he has a much bigger role and a much more op important part of the story. And Dodder Sattler, of course, also only had a couple of scenes in, in Jurassic Park 3, sadly, which I also hated. So, yeah. This film, however, thankfully undoes that, which I was happy about. And also as well, um, when it comes to re the returning characters, of course, from the World Trilogy, Chris Pratt once again gives a great performance as Owen Grady, as always. Yeah, Chris Pratt's a legend, and... But as Howard also does a good job playing Claire as well in this, and as well as that, um, when it comes to other familiar faces returning, um, the villain of the movie, of course, is Dr. Lewis Dodson, and he, of course, is that, is that villain, of course, from the first movie, who hires Dennis Nedry to, to steal those embryos, of course. And he got recasted, and now is now being played by Campbell Scott, because... Um, the actor who played it in the first film called Cameron Four, um, I believe he of course um, got arrested, so oh, um, so he's in prison, so he of course could not reprise his role for this movie, so I can definitely understand why they had to recast the role, of course, and also returning as well is Omar Sy as, as Barry Sembene, who, who of course is Owen's trainer friend at Jurassic World. And he is now a French intelligence agent. And unfortunately, I didn't like how he hardly appeared in the film because he was one of my favorite parts of Jurassic World, in my opinion. And sadly, he only appeared, you know, very briefly in this movie, sadly. And also, as well, returning is BD Wong as, as Dr. Wu as well. And um, yeah, I think this movie definitely used him better as well compared to previous installments as well, in my opinion, thankfully, as well. And it's still it's, it's, it's my favourite role of B.D. Wong. And also as well, um, when it comes to other returning characters, now, there is of course a character, of course, in Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom who really know me, which of course was Franklin Webb. But thankfully in this film, he hardly appears. Thank goodness for that, because his character was so annoying in, in Fallen Kingdom. So thankfully this film barely gives him any screen time, which I was happy about, because he really know me in Fallen Kingdom when I watched it. And also, as well as, of course, the cast, as well, of those who are the characters that I loved in this movie, uh, I definitely, as well, think the visual effects are, once again, absolutely gorgeous to look at, and with incredible CGI, and the effects for dinosaurs are brilliant. Definitely very well done. And and it's definitely, you know, a very stunning, especially considering we made it during, during the pandemic as well. So, so despite, of course, the bad production due to the coronavirus, of course, you know, hindering things, they still did a great job with visual effects as well. And also as well, well um, I also as well definitely love the music composed by Michael Giacchino as well. I think he did a great job composing the music once again in this movie, like he's done for previous two movies. And he's a great composer in general, and this film is definitely no exception. And in addition, and as well, I'll, um, now, I know you guys are probably going to be asking me why do I think the extended version is, is better than the theatrical version so there's several reasons why in my opinion the extended version is a true version so but the extended version of course only adds 14 minutes of additional scenes right so so it adds lots, lots of great things so one thing it adds is a prologue which shows the dinosaurs first roaming the earth 65 million years ago so that was definitely a nice way for a franchise to come full circle, in my opinion. How it starts from from the very, very, very beginning of, of dinosaurs first roaming the earth before humans came along. And then also as well, um, they also added more standoffs between Owen and also the characters called uh, Rain Delacourt as well. So, so it helped, of course, show the stakes of Rain kidnapping Ink Beta and Maisie Lockwood. So I definitely like that, but... Maisie will get to him in a bad quality as well, sadly. There's also as well a scene where um, Maisie catches Beta and wanders into town as well. So it explains, of course, um, what she was up to when Claire asked her about it later on. Then also we see Hunter encounter with Blue and Beta as well. So I like how it gave them both more presence compared to, you know, the feature where we didn't really appear that much. And... We also got to see a, a knife fight lesson extended with, with Owen training Maisie. So I like how that added more development for Owen as well. And we got to see Ellie meeting the first locust as well. So, so yeah, that was it was nice way to extend the legacy cast storyline as well. 
and we got to see more of Ellie and Alan as well, which I was happy to see in this, and yeah, <clears throat> a nice conversation rather than cutting to a chase, which, so it was nice to see their charm back on screen after all this time, and so yeah, and another honourable thing that I did also love it in this was also probably the scene where, where Grant gives words of wisdom, I definitely like that, um, so it was definitely nice to see, you know, that his patience wins out as always. So I, I like how we did that for him and gave him development. So yeah, and I was already told about I by my favorite YouTube Empire Fan Productions because when he was on one of my streams once talking about it, he told me that um, there was a scene that I didn't in, in extended version which helped develop Alan Grant as a character, and I can definitely see why. So oh um, that de that scene definitely showed it, and the extended ed edition definitely really helped. It was very impressive. And, yeah, and also as well, the film does also have a nice bookend to involving the T-Rex because in the one way it looks like the T-Rex has died, we see a, a quick flash of lightning which triggers a, a flashback to, to, of course, the opening prologue before the real fight begins. So, I think by seeing that flash of life, it was kind of like a bookend, really, which was, which was really cool. And, yeah, that's what I liked about this. So, yeah, in my opinion, the extended version is the true version. So, if you guys did not like or were let down or disappointed by the theatrical version, I'd recommend to see the extended version because the extended version, you know, answers, you know, some questions and it adds more development to the characters and, and crucial scenes that should have been in, in the theatrical version. Like, they should have released the extended version in theatres, in my opinion, really. It should have been the true version from, from the very beginning since it first came out. And... Also as well, other good things besides, of course, the cast and the visuals and the music and also as well, the extended scenes is also as well part of the pacing because um, the extended version that I saw um, was 2 hours and 40 minutes. And in my opinion, the film has a very good pace because compared to Fallen Kingdom, which I thought was really boring after, of course, the, the volcano scene, um, this film, thankfully, does not, not, not have as much boredom, in my opinion, which I definitely did like about it. So that was really good. And... Also, as well, the writers of this movie also earned my respect because they did something with the, le with, with the legacy characters, which which I was worried would, would happen when I went into it due to the film getting negative reviews, but thankfully this was not the case because what I respect is they did not kill off the original three heroes. I was very happy about that because they came back in their full glory and had great scenes. So, like I said, guys, the scenes with, with the original three heroes was my favourite part of this movie. I just love watching their scenes. They were definitely my favourite thing to watch in this. And I'm so glad the film didn't kill them off. That's why the writers of the film earned my respect for that. Because I've seen it way too many times with times before. For example, of course, with, with the Disney World sequel Trashology, of course, killing off beloved characters, of course, who are legacy characters. And also many other things too, as well. But thankfully it was not the case with this movie. So this is why I will gladly watch this over where the hell the secret trash of Disney Wars was, absolutely. Because this one was a masterpiece in comparison to that trash, in my opinion. So yeah. Um, so it was, it was definitely, you know, a, a great film, nonetheless, guys. And the extended version, like I said, is a true version. However, unfortunately, while it, I do think the extended version is the superior version... This film, however, may not be perfect by any means or the best one in the franchise, in my opinion. Because, like, this is probably my fourth favourite behind, of course, the original movie, The Lost World and Jurassic World. With reasons being because, now, I, I mentioned this, this, something bad about Maisie Lockwood earlier, guys, which I'm going to get to here. And here it is because I did not like how this film made her very unlikable. Like, she was really rude and to, to of course, her adoptive parents, Owen and Claire. Like... They were, they were, she was, she, they were really nice to her. They took her in as their adoptive daughter after happened in Fallen Kingdom, and she was rude to them. Like, no, I can't accept that. That was just ridiculous. So, so yeah, I feel this film definitely really, really amazing in my opinion. I mean, Isabella Servan did a good job playing her, like she, she has done in both films she's been in. But I just didn't like her character in this film. I thought she was very unlikable, rude, and disrespectful, and I didn't like that at all. I was let down by that. Like, I was hoping that they'd make her like what in what could be her last appearance in the franchise, but sadly not. Because this might well, will be the last one where we'll see, of course, these characters, of course. And I hope it will be, because I don't see an appointment doing any more after this. And also, as well, now, I, I also said that I did not like how Omar Sai's character 
Of course, Barry Sembeni was underused earlier. I didn't like that in the movie because I thought he was great in Jurassic World. And also as well, I also did, did not like the, the entire subplot involving the locusts because I think it was completely irrelevant to what's supposed to be a Jurassic movie. Like, this film should be about dinosaurs, not locusts. Come on. So, like, I don't understand why they had to add locusts into this movie. It didn't make any sense why they'd do that. So, I'd, I'd rather be, the focus be on dinosaurs. Because this is supposed to be a dinosaur franchise, not a locust franchise. Like, you, you might as well call it a locust park or something instead of Jurassic Park. <laughs> or Locust World Dominion or whatever. Because, <laughs> yeah, it was, it was definitely, you know, not good how they included that. Because it took away, you know, entertainment in the scenes where the locusts appeared. Because I wanted dinosaurs, of course. It's supposed to be a dinosaur movie. So, yeah. So, that's about it, really. So, my only bad qualities I have with, with a movie, of course, is that... Is it made? He was unlikable. All my side was underused, and also as well, and the whole locust subplot I thought was completely irrelevant and was not needed to be included at all in this franchise because this is a dinosaur franchise, not an insect franchise, of course. So yeah, but nonetheless, for guys, I still really like Jurassic World Dominion, and I of course prefer the extended version. The extended version to me is the true version. If you guys haven't seen it already, I'd recommend it and, and go check it out, of course. It should hopefully be on, on the Blu-ray release of a movie, because it was, of course, on my Blu-ray 4K Steelbook of a movie. If there's to choose from when you go on, onto a menu for a movie, so, yeah. Now, when it comes to ratings, so, I remember when I first saw a film, um, because, like I said, guys, I didn't think it was terrible when I first saw it. I thought it was good, in my opinion, and one of the most underrated films of 2022. If I was to give it a score out of 10, I'd probably give it a very decent score of 7 out of 10. But, when it comes to extended version, however, because of the scenes it added, which, which gave development to the characters and made scenes make more sense and, and it helped provide a bookend to a franchise, I would give the extended version a very a solid score of 8 out of 10. So yeah, that's how I would rate it out of 10. Definitely, in my opinion, an improvement and much better than the theatrical version, in my opinion. So yeah, and... I really hope we don't do any, any more films after Dominion, in my opinion, because I don't see the point of them doing any more now. I mean, unfortunately, there has been a chance of, of them seeing what the future is going to be for it. They've not ruled out the, the possibility, but I will have a say, guys, but I'm not going to watch these planned movies if they do them, because I don't see the, the point. Because I think this film was a great end to a franchise. You know, it, it made it come full circle. It gave closure to the characters. So, I don't see the point of them doing any more, to be honest. I mean, I will one day check out that spin-off Netflix animated show called Jurassic World Camp Cretaceous. I'll definitely give that a watch, see what I think of that. But, I won't be watching any more of the films, because I don't see either point, really. So, yeah. Um, I think this was definitely a great way to end the story to me. But, they're not doing any more. So, I'm not going to be watching any of what we're going to do. So, yeah. Um... So, guys, uh, this is me me doing my eye review for Jurassic World Dominion. I was mainly talking about, about the extended version in, in this, because that to me is a true version. Um, and definitely better than the physical version. Um, so, you know, drill, guys, be sure to give this video a like. Also, be sure to let us all in the comments what you guys think of Jurassic World Dominion. If you saw it, I'll comment below what you think of it, what you guys think of it. Also, be sure to join Team Prime by pressing subscribe to come in the future. If you would like to be a member, you can resort using a piece of letter or, or you can look in the description. And life finds a way.